Good morning. Welcome to worship on the third Sunday in Pentecost. We are so glad that you are here this morning. Just a couple of things to get us started. Uh, we welcome Dr. Gail Sawyer this morning as our guest musician while Jeremy is away, and we are so thankful that she is sharing her gifts with us today. Uh, we also have Jennifer as our cantor this morning. She will sing on our behalf, and we can meditate on the words of the Psalms and the liturgy uh, as we go along. And of course, today is Youth Sunday. Today we get to celebrate the graduation milestone with several of our graduating high school seniors. We have two this morning and we will do that uh, after the hymn of the day. We are just so delighted to be celebrating this big event in their lives together. All right, I believe that's all. So let us stand uh, for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, the manna, God of manna, and the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundant life, let us confess our sin. Holy God, our constant provider, hear us as we come to you, confessing our sin. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved in God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life, you have received God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the
The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet, prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. We read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. Please join me on the bold verses. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. On the psalmetry of the lyre and on to the melody of the harp, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread like a cedar of Lebanon. And those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the forests of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who has died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we much, once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the grain, full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up, and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do you remember growing a bean sprout in a little paper cup in elementary school? Sprouting beans is one of those first science experiments that many of us did as children. Do you remember the delight of the day that you saw a tiny green shoot coming up from the dirt? We knew that sprout was supposed to come up. We were the ones who planted the seed and the ones who watched over it. And yet, when it finally did happen, we were so excited. The joy of that sprout appearing was no less real because it was supposed to happen. There's something about plants. Even when we understand science behind plant growth, even when we know the process, even when we've grown them before, perhaps it has something to do with knowing that even if we do everything right, sometimes the plant doesn't grow the way we planned. The result is a bit out of our control, even when we are the planters. There's some trust and wonder at play as we wait for the sprout to emerge. There's a bit of mystery under the soil. As Jesus puts it, the seed would sprout and grow, and the planter does not know how. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, God's will being fulfilled in the world, reconciliation and connection flourishing, faith growing. It is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. It is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. God's kingdom, God's work, God's will, God's gift of faith is like a seed growing into a thriving plant and we are part of that growth. Today at the 11 o'clock service, three of our graduating seniors will be sharing their testimonies, their faith stories. We'll be recording them so that you can see them later in this week. When we talk about sharing testimonies, it's not uncommon to think that we need a thunderous God moment or a life-changing circumstance that turns us around completely. Isn't that what the books and the movies show as good testimony? And if our story doesn't have a groundbreaking faith moment, we might think we don't have a story to share. But in fact, more often than not, our faith is grown slowly, steadily over time, nurtured along the way. More often than not, our faith stories mirror the kingdom of God, which is like seeds sown on the ground, and day and night they sprout and grow, and we do not know how. In our faith stories, there may be moments of startling growth spurts coming out of nowhere. And sometimes there are thunderous moments when a bloom suddenly opens up. Those are beautiful moments. But the slow, steady, sometimes unseen growth is often the majority of our story. And those parts are beautiful too. Those small moments add up and become something much bigger, like a little mustard seed growing into a great shrub. And at times, our faith may even seem dormant, like plants which disappear in the winter. But like bulbs growing underground, God is still working, 
still growing the kingdom and our faith, even if we do not know how. That mystery is also beautiful and a joy when we suddenly find a green shoot of faith when we did not expect it. This is why every one of our testimonies is good and why it is good to share them because every testimony tells the story of God's kingdom work in the world. All the pieces of our stories tell how the Holy Spirit nurtures us and grows our faith through people, opportunities, challenges, experiences, through passions and needs, through callings and communities. When we share these stories, we marvel at the work God is doing And we give thanks that God works even in ways we do not know. We are encouraged when we hear some of our story reflected in someone else's. We delight in the ways that God weaves our stories together, even when our stories are so different. And in each story, no matter how different, we see God act. Our stories are beautiful, not because of what we do, but because of what God does. God calls us, nurtures us, teaches us, guides us, refreshes us, redirects us. God grows us as part of God's kingdom out of love and grace. With that good news as the center of our story, a story fast or slow, sprouting or blooming, with God's goodness at the center, how can we keep from sharing our stories? Thanks be to God. Amen. Today, we celebrate the graduation milestone. We invite our graduates and their families to come forward as their names are read. Connor Johnson and Abby Kettner. At the 11 o'clock service, we will celebrate with Emery Beer, Jaden Brown, Caroline Corbett, and Palmer Floyd. Connor and Abby. As you graduate from high school and move forward in your life's journey, we celebrate with you. We give thanks to God for guiding you this far and for the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life as you journey on. Parents, in Christian love, you presented your children for holy baptism. In their baptism, sacred promises were made, which you have supported. As they take this next step in their lives, will you continue to walk with them? encouraging them in fulfilling their baptismal promises and living as a follower in Christ? If so, please answer, 
We will and we ask God to help and guide us. Graduates, please lay your hands on your adults for a blessing. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for the faithful work of these adults. We ask God's blessing upon them as they begin a new chapter of parenting and life as their children graduate. In this time of transition, support them through this community of faith. Amen. You can let go. Graduates, we give thanks for your presence in this congregation and in God's family. Today we celebrate what you have become at this moment in time. As you enter this new chapter in your life, will you continue to live out your baptismal promises as a follower of Christ? If so, please answer, I will and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, in baptism we become a family of faith, and as siblings in Christ we are called to love and support one another. Will you continue in your commitment to lift up, support, encourage, and pray for these graduates and their families in their faith journey? If so, please answer, we will and we ask God to help and guide us. Families, please present your children with their quillow and then wrap it around them. These quillows were handmade specially for each of our graduates by their families and members of our congregation. <laughs> Families, please lay your hands on your graduates. Graduates, made this quillow, which wraps you in the love of your family. Be a reminder of God's abiding presence within you and Christ's call upon your life. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, we thank you for these graduates, your children. As they step forward into new chapters of life, comfort their fears with the full knowledge of your presence. Strengthen their determination to walk in the footsteps of Jesus as disciples in a world that needs their spirit. Guide their feet as they move through life. Protect them from the pitfalls of darkness with the warmth and promise of your light. Connect their passions and gifts to the needs of the world. We ask this blessing upon them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations, graduates. We now profess the faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enrich the faith of your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountains, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer and wait on your healing, especially Art, Sylvia, Louise, Kathy, Bill, Steve, Scott, Stephen, Jackie, Vicki, Julie, Margaret, Kay, Yvonne, Eddie, B, Jack, Eric, Mary, Frank, Bill, Madeline, Earl, Barbara, Stephen, Kathy, and Ted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and pray for our church musicians, technology experts, and willing volunteers. We dedicate to you the joyful praise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the prayerful melody of cantors, and the songs from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks for the youth and children of our congregation. Help us to encourage them in their faith and open our minds and hearts to the faith they share with us. Guide us to work together across generations for the glory of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another from where you are. If you are joining us remotely, we invite you to give somebody a call today and share the peace of Christ with them. Uh, dwell in a bit of community via telephone or however you need to do it in order to connect on this day. Uh, now's the time when we celebrate our offering. Of course, if you are here in person and you have an offering, we invite you to leave it in the plate along with your tear and share. Don't forget that part on your way out today. I uh, just wanted to say a brief word of thanks to all those who continue to support uh, the ministry that we share here. I think in the last week alone, we had somebody, Francis was in here filling uh, first aid kits. We had Bob Stonebreaker working on the screen over at the White House. Jim and Doug are always working on property issues. We've got Doris taking care of the plants. Floyd was taking care of the prayer garden yesterday. I mean, it is a team effort, and so many people support what it is we do here with not just their offerings, but with their time and their gifts and their faith. And we probably don't talk about that stewardship of faith quite enough, but the faith that you give to this place is shown in our seniors. And so we thank you for the way that your faith has contributed to them and theirs. Now, we, uh, well, we do not have our, <laughs> our video editor today, but uh, we will have an anthem later this afternoon that will be posted on our YouTube channel. Our worship service continues with the offertory response.
Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very body and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body given for the life of the world. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and in rising opened the way to eternal life. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, though you die, yet shall you live. Come, receive this foretaste of the blessed life which does not end. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. A few quick announcements before we begin the Lamb of God. We will commune in a similar way that we have been for some time. We will invite this side to come forward first through the center aisle. Uh, as you receive communion, we just ask that you stretch your hands out, and I will proclaim that the body of Christ is given for you. Pastor Rachel will uh, proclaim that the blood of Christ is shed for you. And we will give the host... Uh, drop that in your hands there. If you need the gluten-free, please uh, indicate as much. That way we can uh, make sure that you get that. And then this side, uh, just after this side. So let us begin.
Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world, empowered by the life you have given us. In your name we pray. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, as I said, Craig and Jeremy are away on a well-deserved vacation, but we are so thankful to have Dr. Sawyer with us and also to have uh, Josh manning the camera and Jennifer leading us in song. Thank you all for helping us today. Uh, the senior testimonials will be available on YouTube probably later this afternoon, barring some issue with the editing. We'll see. It's on me, so if there's a problem, I'm the one to blame, but we uh, will give it our best. Um, also, uh, a couple of hymns and the anthem. And uh, today will be our final coffee, uh, virtual coffee hour for a while. That's today at about 12.15, so we invite you to that. That is on Facebook Live. And now receive God's blessing. The blessing of Almighty God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.